So we're going to be doing another deck profile here for Spirals. Uh, this is a different version as you can see by the thumbnail. You might be a little surprised that the cards I'm actually choosing to play in this particular deck. But mind you, this deck is a more fun variant of the deck. So if you want a more uh, competitive one that you would actually bring to a YCS or a Regionals even, um, then I would recommend you check out the previous deck profile on it, the first deck profile I did on Spirals, uh, because that one focused a lot more on being able to play against different uh, decks of the format. This particular version focuses on being more fun and being able to explore and play different options with Spirals here, but ultimately it has no competitive value whatsoever, it just gives you a more fun experience, um, but ultimately the deck is still a very consistent deck, so it still does a lot of fun things. Uh, I'm not playing any hand traps in this deck, so... We just want to draw into our spirals and be able to just do our fun things as uh, we can actually with our spirals. And I think uh, that's one of the things with uh, competitive decks is that they lose the uh, fun to the actual deck itself when you don't get to play the actual cards or, or the cards within the archetype. I mean, most people just say it's a bunch of bad cards that you're playing, but ultimately, where's the fun in that, right? So... Playing three copies of Super Agent, still a very amazing card. Uh, again, it's just a really good card to extend the board and allow you to do your plays and everything like that. Spiral Tough bumped it up to three in this particular one because we want to maximize as many Spiral Monsters as we possibly can uh, without having to uh, affect the consistency of the deck here. Spy Gal Misty. Now, I'm sure you guys actually like missing this card a lot. She's just not... Uh, a card that's being recognized as part of Spirals because they put her as Spy Gal and uh, because of that she's not searchable by anything else and as a result the only reason I play her is in hopes to actually draw into her to allow her to actually do things. Uh, but she is still a very nice card being able to either bounce back tough or super agent and allowing you to draw a card. I mean it's still just another option there. She's also level 4 so giving you more rank 4 options um, but ultimately she is just there for the pure fun of it. We are also playing two copies of the Last Resort, another card to just stop our opponents from being able to destroy our cards, and again another level 4 option there. Uh, the Quick Fix of course, we are also playing the One Drone, the One Master Plan, as well as the One Sleeper, and that pretty much concludes the actual monster lineup here, we are not playing any hand traps, we are not playing anything else, it's just all spirals here, uh, trying to make this as pure as possible. Moving on to spells, we're playing one copy of Spiral Resorts. Obviously, it's only at one. Quite unfortunate, but uh, what can we do? Pseudo Space, definitely another option. Uh, but of course, we're playing the two Terraformings. We're not playing the Dragon Ravines, obviously. We're not playing Set Rotation, because obviously, uh, there's no need for it anymore since we're not playing Destrudo. We are playing the one Assault, again. Uh, just another option to extend your plays. We also have the Big Red, uh, another Monster Reborn, really, for the deck. So, really nice there. Uh, but of course, the new addition to the deck is the Spiral Gear Fully Armed. Of course, this card is searchable by Quick Fix, so as a result, it is still a really amazing card. It allows your Super Agent to actually gain a 1000 attack. Now, keep in mind, Double Helix is also counted as Super Agent, so you have plenty of targets. And if it destroys your monsters, uh, your opponent's monsters by battle, you can banish both the opponent's monster and one other card your opponent controls. And that's not even targeting, so it's definitely a really nice card here. Also, if this card is actually destroyed on the field and sent to the graveyard, you could actually uh, target your super agent in your graveyard and special summon it back. Remember, Spiral Tough is counted as super agent in the graveyard as well, so you could also bring that out. You have a good amount of targets, fully armed is definitely a really nice card. That's uh, definitely one of the more underrated cards in the deck, uh, but still provides a lot of really fun options to actually allow you to clear the opponent's board. Of course, we're playing two copies of Foolish Burial Goods to send our Assault or our Rescues to the Graveyard. Playing the uh, Foolish Burial and the One for One, again, another options. Uh, we have Reinforcement of the Army, we have plenty of Warriors to search for, so definitely a good option there. Monster Reborn, just like Big Red, it's another way to extend your boards or extend your plays. And... 
Uh, although we're not going to be stopping our opponents with hand traps, we want them to actually not use their hand traps against us. And as a result, I'm playing Cord by the Grave still, and um, yeah, it still does the job, because even in the most casual of decks, you'll still encounter uh, players who actually still want to play um, hand traps, so as a result, Cord by the Grave will definitely do the job in stopping them. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely going to help out. As for traps, we're playing the more spiral options, so we're spiral gear utility wire, we're actually bumping it up to two, uh, just because again, it's another way to disrupt your opponents, but at the same time, it's also searchable, and uh, it more so shows off what spirals are as a pure archetype. Uh, we're also playing the two rescue, but I am adding in the uh, spiral mission recapture. Again, it's a spiral mission card, so it is searchable from uh, master plan here, but its effect is essentially uh, once per turn, if a spiral monster is special summoned uh, to your field, then you can just target one of your opponent's monsters and take control of it until the end phase. It just can't attack, but you're going to be using it as a link material anyway. And the interesting thing is if a spiral monster you would you control would actually be destroyed by battle or card effect. You can banish this card from your graveyard instead of destroying those monsters. So a bit of added protection there, but definitely a really nice card in the deck. All right, so onto the extra deck, we are playing two copies of Double Helix because again, we could actually still go for a lot of plays with just Double Helix alone. Uh, the Trigate Wizard, just giving you a bunch of options to go for. Link Rebo, uh, of course, the Nightmare Phoenix and the Nightmare Cerberus. Um, again, I've already gone over these cards in the previous deck profile, so uh, no need to go over them again. Uh, Topologic, again, like I said, uh, he needs to have the big attack to actually help us out with things. Griffin, giving us a bit of options here as well, but of course I recommended Unicorn uh, as before. Uh, Tornado Dragon, uh, Baguska, Abyss Dweller, and also the Castell. Uh, but to end things off, we are playing the simple Utopia engine, which will definitely just deal with a lot of things here. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this particular deck profile. The purpose of this deck profile was really just to highlight the essence of a pure deck, and uh, just to really get on with uh, the fun with Yu-Gi-Oh here, because I think in this particular game, it's we're heading into formats where... Uh, people are just starting to get too competitive with the game and you know, it's not all about competitive uh, play all the time You know, sometimes you have a bunch of uh, newbies actually coming into stores They want to learn the game a lot of young kids actually uh, want to you know They come in and they just bought a structure deck. You don't want to give them too much of a challenge You want to give them an enjoyable experience so as a result playing a deck that isn't too competitive and just overwhelming uh, is definitely a great choice there, so definitely try something out like this, it's definitely a more fun option, and uh, it will definitely promote a more healthy environment for the game. Of course, I wouldn't recommend you bring this to a tournament, you'll definitely have to make a lot more choices there to actually improve on this, but of course, I just want to emphasize the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh can be fun if you actually just try out different things, sometimes it might not be the most optimal build, but uh, you could still have a really fun time with it, so yeah, that's pretty much much it for this deck profile so i hope you guys have a great day i'll see you next time